let's still stay on workflows for a bit. Uh, Rock, looking from a workflow perspective, PT and conventional radiotherapy are pretty similar. Uh, however, when you enter a treatment, uh, the treatment control rooms are quite different. So what do you think this difference exists? And what can we learn as developers of PT systems from conventional RT? I mean, the fundamental problem is that uh, what you're doing is adding a uh, control system onto control system onto control system. And fundamentally, you know, a human has to interact with those control systems. And typically you're looking at multiple monitors and you know, a person can only look at one monitor at a time. And so good, uh, well-integrated radiotherapy systems have no more than two monitors, one for interacting uh, with the control aspects, you know, uh, patient selection, what you're going to be doing, and then image display. In fact, the image display should also include just a conventional camera display of the patient as well. Again, you can only look at one thing at once. And it's often good. I mean, some, some folks say, well, we'll have, we have lots of therapists around. Each one can be looking at a different thing. But really, the, you, you really want um, everyone to be engaged in looking nearly at the same thing that's relevant at that instant in time. And, you know, an automobile is a good example of a good workflow. You're essentially, you know, you're, you're looking um, at to see what uh, traffic is coming. Occasionally, you'll, you'll look uh, at a different part uh, of the view. You'll look in the rear view mirror and the side mirrors. But you know what? Your attention uh, is on one thing at one time. And if we could only design uh, systems um, that really inherently dealt with the therapist, as a individual that uh, can only think about one thing at once. And then the other fundamental problem, I think with protons, um, in fact, even goes back into treatment planning. We fundamentally treat protons as if it was a fundamentally different radiation therapy modality. And, and the reason for that is that we're, you know, the Bragg peaks are, uh, are where, you know, the very high do dose part uh, occurs and and the, and the slightly higher LET part. So we're so terrified of putting a Bragg peak in, in normal tissue um, that this high, very high resolution part of the beam we almost never use. And the fundamental problem there is we don't know where the Bragg peak is uh, to, to an accuracy that allows us to do conventional, more conventional based treatment planning. And, uh, and so for example, I know that Cozy Lab is uh, working with Proton VDA on uh, on proton radio on, on proton radiography, and and the folks uh, who have worked with them uh, at the Chicago uh, Northwest Proton Center have showed that you can control the Bragg, Bragg peak to within a millimeter um, based on proton radiography for uh, brain, head, and neck, um, and um, and the thorax. So what we really need to do is we need to think of a holistic picture and say, fundamentally, um, we have this great high resolution structure called the Bragg peak. How do we use it effectively? We, um, and, and so, you know, it comes really, e even some of the problems in proton radiation uh, therapy come around to the very fact that we're, we're afraid of what we brag about so much, the Bragg peak. <laughs> um, so, so I, I think there's ways to improve it. Fundamentally, you have to start with um, full integration uh, and not have disparate control systems. As Jay says, trying to communicate with each other uh, and coordinate, coordinate each, each other. It takes very good architecture to simultaneously have um, good um, unit-based uh, uh, software um, control um, and fully integrated software control. So it's a, it's a little bit of art, a little bit of science uh, and the architecture is so important.